the Chicago Sun-Times, columnist Neil Steinberg recounts last week's president, pre presidential rally that happened with the steel workers, and he recounted it this way. We need steel, Trump said. We need steel plants. I look at the faces of you people. I could be one of you. I like you guys. Well, that struck me as either sincere or an amazing facsimile. The workers, for their part, couldn't give him a standing ovation because they never sat down. I left the hall thinking, Donald Trump is going to be reelected in 2020. The Democrats don't have anyone who can touch him. Bank on it. Don't hate me for being the one to tell you. Hmm. Joining me now for reaction is Ben Shapiro, editor of The Daily Wire. Ben, I read that and I thought that's at least an honest liberal view. He hates Trump. He can't stand Trump. But it, going to a rally and seeing the reaction of the people and thinking Kamala Harris or Cory Booker, <laughs> are they really going to get the get the mojo going? What are your thoughts there? I think it's exactly right. I mean, the, the culture war that's been raging in the country is really not a war between the elites and the non-elites. It's between the elitists and everyone else. People who think that jobs being lost at the New York Daily News is a national tragedy, but jobs being lost in the steel industry is totally fine because those are a bunch of rubes in the Rust Belt anyway. What President Trump really does better than virtually any other politician on the American scene is he, he conveys that he really does care about people who are in these industries, the people who are doing the, the so-called dirty jobs that people on the coast tend to think only illegal immigrants are willing to do. Yeah, Ben, I was I did my angle that tonight on the Koch brothers, who've done a lot of good stuff on tax reform and supporting Brett Kavanaugh and tax, uh, you know, deregulation, excuse me. They've done good stuff on that. But they are just adamant that even discussing tariffs is going to crater the global economy. It's going to be terrible. They have, they have 60,000 or 65,000 workers overseas. They have 60,000 in the United States, but they have a lot overseas. So they're the old Republican guard, and they want, they don't like this. And they're going to start funding some Democrats because they want to fight that Trump approach to trade. Well, I think obviously funding Democrats is not the answer to this. I'm a free trader myself, and I'm not particularly fond of tariff policy. But the real key here, again, I think is less policy driven than it is even cultural. The president obviously has a lot of sympathy for people who are in these industries that, that have paid a price due to trade. I mean, there's no question that there are winners and losers in trade. Overall, I think that trade is a great thing for the United States. I think free trade is a great thing for the United States. But to pretend that there are no downsides to trade is obviously not telling the whole truth. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that, again, the results of the election in those Rust Belt states and they suffered the great job losses over the last 20 years of China being in the WTO. I mean, it, all these all these neocon hawks, Ben, who all they did is tell us, you know, we got to build up the military, got to build up the military. That's great. I, I agree. But China is the big threat to, to America's dominance militarily and economically. And so if we just grow their economy at the expense of our own, we're going to be in some trouble down the road. I also want you to get uh, to get some thoughts from you on something that's kind of the opposite of what that Chicago Sun-Times uh, columnist wrote. This was a piece published this morning, imagining the day after Trump's reelection loss in 2020. OK, here it is. As Trump seethed and tweeted in defeat late Tuesday and President-elect Elizabeth Warren celebrated, the arc of the Trump story is starting to make more sense than it has for much of his chaotic presidency. The normal rules of politics do apply to Donald Trump after all. So now the time the time was up for Trump. They're already imagining his loss, which tells you, well, the derangement syndrome, whatever you want to call it, that cliche is already wearing uh, thin, but they're now having to write about 2020 and 2018. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that they're desperate to to take down President Trump right now. They are hoping, obviously, that 2016 was an outlier, and they're going to blame it on anything. They'll blame it on Hillary Clinton being a bad candidate, finally, or they'll blame it on Russian collusion, which they have yet to prove. Uh, but they, what they won't acknowledge is that there's a systemic problem inside the Democratic Party, and screaming Medicare for all and running a Hillary Clinton clone like Elizabeth Warren is not going to fix the giant gap that they have with the middle of the country, whom they still consider a bunch of bitter clingers working jobs that they would never deign to get their hands dirty doing. Listen, I'm a guy who's from the coast, right? I'm from L. I spent some of my time in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I am an elite by any of these standards, but the bottom line is that the people in the middle of the country are doing work that is as important or more important than the people on the coast who are sitting in, in their coffee houses writing scripts. Well, but you don't, you don't, you're not necessarily an elite. Just because you go to those nice institutions, if you understand the plight of the regular working person and you think that they have a role in our economy, 
You're not an elite. You're someone who went well, to I'm good schools. I'm an elite, but I'm not an elitist. And I okay. think President Trump actually made this distinction at yeah. a rally recently. He said, listen, the people yeah. in, this audience is, in this audience are elite. Got if it. you're good at your job, if you work hard, if you do well in good the United stuff. States, you are an elite by any standard. But you're not an elitist. And this All is right. where the Democrats get it wrong. All right, they ben, think thank that being an elite.